Hi there, today I'm going to be showing you how you can achieve nested looping with the looping by Zapier action. If you've used this action before, then you most likely have been frustrated by the 500 iteration limit imposed on this action. And today I'm going to show you how you can overcome this limit. I have got another blog post here, which shows you how you can use JavaScript or Python code instead of the looping by Zapier action because these code steps won't be limited to 500 iterations. However, they are limited to a 10 second timeout. So that brings me back to this video, which will show you how to do more than 500 iterations and without incurring any timeouts in Zapier. But if you are comfortable with programming and you can achieve your 500 iterations within 10 seconds, then take a look at this Zapier nested looping using webhooks and Python posts, because it'll show you how you can do some of that looping using code. The way we are going to achieve nested looping doesn't actually involve any nested looping within Zapier at all. We are going to use a Google script to do a lot of the nested looping and heavy work for us. So in this example here, we've got an outer for loop, which is going to iterate over all the rows of our spreadsheet. So in this example here, we are using the customer database large Google Sheet. And we can see there's 1,250 rows in this Google Sheet. Okay, so let's start by explaining what this inner for loop is doing. Since the looping by Zapier action is limited to doing 500 iterations, this inner for loop here, we set it to take in a maximum of 500 rows and it packages these 500 rows into the correct format so that we can send them to Zapier using a webhook. And since we can only take in 500 rows at a time and give these to Zapier, we need the outer for loop here to iterate over all the rows of our spreadsheet since we have more than 500. So the first time we come in to our outer for loop, we then go to the inner for loop and the inner for loop packages the first 500 rows for us. So it's going to package all of these 500 rows, send them to Zapier. Zapier is then going to iterate over all of those 500 rows. However, we still have more rows left in this sheet. So then we go back to the top of our outer while loop and then we come back to the inner while loop. But this time we are going to get the next 500 rows in this Google sheet. We're going to package them up, send them to Zapier. Zapier is going to iterate over this next 500 rows. And then since we still have more rows in this sheet, we're going to come back to the top of our outer while loop, come into the inner while loop. And then in the inner while loop, we are going to package the remaining 250 rows. And then we're going to send these remaining 250 rows to Zapier via webhook. So that is the overarching flow that we are trying to achieve. We've got a Google script with an outer for loop which will iterate over all the rows of our spreadsheet. And it calls an inner while loop, which packages all the rows in packages of 500. And then these packages get sent to Zapier, which will then iterate over a maximum of 500 rows at a time. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Google script code that we are going to use to achieve this overarching flow. So. If you go to your Google Sheet, you go to Extensions, App Script, you can add a new script here using the plus icon. And I give you this JavaScript code that you will need in the blog post here. So just scroll down and click on this JavaScript code link here, and it will bring you to GitHub, which contains this code that you can just copy and paste into a new script here. So now let me walk you through what this code is doing and how it achieves 
the desired flow that I mentioned before. The first thing we do is we get a reference to the customer database large sheet and we store it in the variable sheet. We then get all the values within the sheet and we store it in the rows variable. Then we define our Zapier iteration limit, which is 500 iterations. Then we define four variables for each column in the sheet. We've got a variable for the first name, the order number, the email address, and the phone number. So we create four variables for each of these. Okay, so this might look a bit intimidating at first, but bear with me as I go through the definition and the setup of these embedded for loops. So the way we define our for loop is it starts at i equal to one. So that means it's gonna start at row one in our spreadsheet. Then we are going to go until i is less than rows.length and rows.length is just the number of rows in our spreadsheet. So in this case, we've got 1,251 rows. So we're gonna go from i equal to one to i is equal to less than 1,251. And then each time we come into this outer for loop, we are going to increase i by the Zapier iteration limit, which is 500. So the first time we come in, i is one. The next time we come in, i is gonna be 501. The next time we come in, i is gonna be 1001. And then the next time it's gonna be 1501. However, 1501 is not less than or equal to the number of rows we have in our sheet, which is 1251. So therefore the outer for loop here will terminate and it won't run again. So now I think it's helpful to take a quick look back at our flow diagram here. So what I just walked you through, this configuration for the outer for loop will ensure that this outer for loop here runs over all the rows in our sheet. Then this inner for loop here is responsible for packaging 500 rows at a time so that we can then later on send 500 rows to Zapier. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we configure this inner for loop here. So we can see that we go from a new variable j, which we set equal to zero. And then we are going to go until j is less than the Zapier iteration limit, which is 500, because remember, we can only send 500 rows at a time to Zapier. So we go for, we go from j is equal to zero to j is less than 500. And we also need to check that i plus j is less than the number of rows we have in our sheet. So the reason for this is the first time we come into our outer for loop, i is equal to one. So therefore we can iterate over the next 500 rows inside this inner for loop and that will bring us to row number 501. So row number 501 is still less than the number of rows dot length. This is fine. The second time we come into our outer for loop here, I will be equal to 501. And then in this inner for loop, we'll go through the next 500 rows so that I plus J the maximum it will be will be 1,001, which is still less than 1,250. Then the third time we come into our outer for loop here, I will be equal to 1,001. And therefore we have to ensure that I plus J is less than rows.length because this first condition will let J go for another 500 iterations. However, we will reach row 1,251 before J reaches 500 because as soon as I plus J reaches 1,251, therefore that means there's no more rows for us to go through. So we need to break out of this inner for loop. So that's why we have these two conditions here to ensure that J is less than 500 because we can only send 500 rows at a time to Zapier, but also ensure that I plus J is less than the number of 
rows we have in our sheet. And you probably guessed this already, but for each iteration of this inner for loop, we only increase j by one. Before explaining what this inner for loop is doing, let's take a look at what the desired output is. So in order to send all these rows to Zapier so that it can iterate over them, we want them to be in this format here. We want all the values in each column to be joined together with the asterisk character. So we want to take all of these values, join them with an asterisk, all of these, all of these, all of these. So then we have four different variables with all the values within these variables joined with the asterisk character. So that's what this inner for loop is responsible for doing. It's responsible for iterating over a maximum of 500 rows at a time, and then taking the values within each column and joining them together with the asterisk character. So the first time we come in, we check to see is the name string empty? Because if the name string is empty, then we don't need to put an asterisk character. We just need to take the value and store it in this string. Then the next time we come in, name string already has a value. So what we're going to do is we are going to set name string equal to whatever is already inside it, add an asterisk character, and then we add the new value. And then similarly, similarly, the third time we come in here, name string is already populated. So we're going to take all the values that are already in name string, add another asterisk character, and then add the newest value. So that's why we have this conditional logic here. And then as I showed before, the output after we run this is four variables, the name string, order string, email string, and phone string, with all the values in these variables joined together with the asterisk character. Okay, so now I just want to explain the i plus j here because I think this best will explain how these nested for loops are set up. So the very first time, we come in, i is going to be equal to 1, and then j is going to be equal to 0. So we're going to take the value at row 1, column 0. And in programming languages and in JavaScript, things start counting at 0. So in our Google Sheet, this is row 0, and this is row 1. So the very first time we come in, i is 1, j is 0. So we are going to go to row number 1 and take the value in the first column, which is Tyron 1. Then we're going to store it in name string. And then we're going to take the value in the second column, third column, and fourth column in this exact same row and store them in these variables. Then we are going to go to the next iteration of our inner for loop here. Since name string already has a value in it, we are going to come to the else statement here. Then we are going to take whatever is in name string already, add the asterisk character, and rows here, i is still equal to 1, j is now equal to 1 as well. So we are going to access the values in the second row here and store them in these four strings. Then we're going to go back up to our inner for loop. We are going to increase j. j is now equal to 2. i is equal to 1. j is equal to 2. So we're going to access the row in our spreadsheet. And then we're going to store those values in these four variables. And then we are going to repeat this another 497 times until j is equal to 500. And then we are going to send all of this information to Zapier using this webhook. And I'll explain that a bit later on. But then we come back to the top. Since j is no longer less than 500, we are going to come back to the top here. We are going to increase i by 500. So i is now equal to 501. We reset all of these variables. <clears throat> so 
so we can put another new 500 values inside and then we restart j with the exact same conditions as before so name string has now been reset so we're going to come in here i is equal to 501 j is equal to zero so now we are going to access the value in row number 501 and we're going to store all of these values in these variables so i is 500 and 1 j is 0 so we're accessing all the values from row number 501 then we increase j name string now has a value so we come down here i is 501 j is now equal to 1 so we access row 502 and store all these values then we increase j j is now equal to 2 and name string already has a value so we come down here and we store all the four column values in the 503rd row and we repeat this for another 500 iterations until j is no longer less than 500. We send all of this stuff to Zapier. Then we still have more rows left in our spreadsheet. So we increase i by 500. i is now equal to 1001. We reset these four variables so we can put new values in them. We reset j. Name string does not have a value, so we come in here i is equal to 1001 j is equal to zero so we store all the values from row number 1001 then we increase j name string has a value so we come down here j is now equal to one so we access all the values from row 1002 and we store them in name string then we increase j j is now equal to two so we access all the values in row 1003 and we add them to whatever is already in all of these strings. And then we do this another 247 times. And this time, remember, when we come into this inner for loop for the last time, there will only be 1250 rows that it needs to do work for. So therefore, in this case, as soon as J is equal to 250, that means that I plus J is now equal to 1,251. So we are no longer less than the number of rows in the sheet. So this condition is now false. And both of these conditions must be true in order to come back into this for loop. So even though J is less than 500, I plus J is now 1,251. And it's no longer less than the number of rows we have in our sheet. So the inner for loop terminates. And then we go back to our outer for loop. We increase I by, one th we increase I by 500 i is now equal to 1501 which is no longer less than 1251 so therefore we break out of the outer for loop and then our whole script terminates because we've sent all the information we need to zap here Whew, that was a tough one thanks for hanging in there as i explained how these nested for loops work hopefully you now understand how these nested for loops work to package up our rows at a maximum of 500 rows at a time and then send them to Zapier. I'll now show you how this little last part of the script works. It's quite simple compared to everything else we've gone through here, but we just define a new timestamp variable to get the current timestamp. And then we define the URL that we want to send this webhook to. So in Zapier, that's just this URL that we copy and paste in here. And then we define what we are going to send to Zapier. So we send the timestamp and then we send the name string, order string and email string. 
And remember that each of these strings now contains a maximum of 500 values concatenated together. So they'll each look something like this. And then when we bring these into Zapier, let's see what the output looks like. When we bring these into Zapier, this is what we will see. And then we can then iterate through all of these different values. And we can tell Zapier what the text delimiter is, which in this case is the asterisk character. And for each email and phone number in this list, we can do something useful like send an email and SMS to each person. So we can see here that we can pull in the email, the order number, the name, and we can do the exact same with the SMS. So we can iterate through all these values we've gotten from our Google script and use them to populate this SMS message body. So going back here, there's one final thing I want to show you. And that's if you do happen to use something similar to this and you want to send emails out to up to 500 people at a time within your for loop, you can use the send email action from Gmail because when I tried the email by Zapier action, I was getting a sorry, that is too many emails sent error. And it was recommending I try Mandrill, Mailgun or Gmail. Even when I was using the Gmail app to send emails, it could only handle about 10 loop iterations before it ran into rate limit issues for my testing. So if you do want to do something like this, where you're sending a lot of emails at once, in order to avoid these sorts of errors with um, Gmail or the email by Zapier action, you'll need to use something like Mandrill or Mailgun. And then just to show you what the output of this looks like eventually when you do get those different emails sent, we can see that all the order numbers are populated, all the names are populated, and even within the email body here, we can see that the order number is populated as well. And one thing to note is that Zapier does not execute its for loop actions sequentially. So we should have seen like order number one, two, three, four, and then five in that order. However, we can see that the emails were sent in a non sequential fashion here. So that's one thing you need to bear in mind about the looping by Zapier action is that it won't execute the iterations in sequential order. Okay, so you might be wondering, okay, great, Tyron, you've showed me that code, but how do I actually execute it and run it? So there are two ways you can do this. One is you can press the run button here within the app script console, and that will execute the script for you and send all the rows to Zapier. Or what you can do is you can create a button like this. You can go insert drawing. and give it whatever formatting you want. Click save and close. And then if you right click on the button, you can assign a script to this button. And in here, we're going to put the name of the function. We paste it in, hit okay. So then every time we click this button, it'll run the script. And if it's the first time you're running the script, you'll need to give Google permission. So this is how you can make the script much more user friendly to execute. You can set up a button like this. So then whatever users are coming into your Google sheet, instead of them having to come in here to the terminal and press run, they can just click the update rows button here. And then that will iterate through this entire sheet and send all these rows to Zapier so that we can send those SMS messages and those emails. If you want to learn more about the looping by Zapier action, then I highly recommend checking out the Zapier for each loop quick start guide here, because I walk through each of the create loop from text, loop from line numbers and loop from numbers actions, and I show you how to use them. So take a look at this blog post if you wanna learn more about looping within Zapier. 
I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like the video, please give it a like. And if you're if you want to see more of this content in the future, then please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.